Today we're talking with Julie Thompson, a postdoctoral fellow at the Boswell Human Performance Lab at Stanford University. Here at the lab, the goal is the prevention of injuries in athletes while also enhancing their performance. Julie's focus is understanding injuries in females, specifically ACL injuries. Thanks for joining us, Julie. We're Thanks. really we're really excited to be in the Human Performance Lab. It kind of sounds cool. Thanks for uh, having me. This is very exciting. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what you do. Sure. So as you said, the goal of the lab is the prevention of injuries and enhancing performance in athletes. Uh, specifically, the study that I'm involved in is the prevention of ACL injuries and really understanding how those injuries happen, um, and in particular in female athletes, because it's been shown that ACL injuries are much more common in women than in men, at a rate of about four to six times higher in women than men. And do, do you see any reason why, there? I mean, from your studies, that that is the case? Yeah, so really there's a couple of reasons why um, there may be a difference between men and women when it comes to these injuries. One thing to keep in mind is that risk factors for ACL injury are really multifactorial. Um, which means that there's a lot of things that come into play that can potentially contribute to whether or not someone will get an injury to their ACL. Um, and so I can mention some of those risk factors. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear some sure. of those risk factors. So there's different categories. There's anatomic risk factors. Um, and so that can be things like joint laxity or looseness in the knee joint. That can be different between men and women. Um, difference in anatomic structure, which relates to things like hip and knee angles. Um, there's also hormonal risk factors, which obviously can be different between men and women. Um, and so one in particular that our lab has investigated is the hormone relaxin, which is found in women and has been suggested to weaken the ACL. Is um, it not found in men relaxin? I don't believe so. Okay. And so there was a, a study that was published in 2011 out of this lab that found that female college athletes who tore their ACL had a significantly higher level of this relaxin hormone than female athletes who didn't tear their ACL. And is there a reason that some athletes, specifically women, have more laxity in their joints? Um, so or is it just certain athletes have more lax? Because you can see, I yeah. see it in yoga, like some sure. people can put their leg behind their head, no problem. Others are just yeah. rock solid tight. So. Yeah, so other than some of the studies that have found that there are different mm -hmm. concentrations of this hormone, I'm not sure that it's known why some, some athletes will have a higher level than others. And if you know someone is prone mm -hmm. to an ACL injury because they have a high level of relaxant or they have lax joints, mm -hmm. what kind of things, I suppose you're going to take us through today, what kind of things you would recommend for those yeah. people? But what would sure. just a few things, what would you recommend for those women? Sure, so there's um, quite a few different intervention programs that have been developed because ACL injuries are such a common problem, especially in female athletes. Um, and really those intervention programs involve exercises that are really targeted at um, developing strength and also uh, maintaining good mechanics and movement and form while the athlete's playing their sport. And so that really comes back to another category of risk factors that are these biomechanical risk factors. Um, and those are different than like the anatomic and hormonal risk factors because they're modifiable. You can actually change those things through exercise and strength training. So I know that you have studied specifically female soccer players mm -hmm. um, from 10 to... Um, through high school currently, right. um, but previously this lab has also done this study with collegiate athletes. And do you find now that more children are tearing their ACLs and how young have you seen kids tearing their ACLs? Sure, so um, I think part of it is that more and more children are participating in sports, mm -hmm. um, especially female athletes. Uh, and also children are starting to specialize in sports at an earlier age. Um, ACLs are still not very common in very young athletes, but there have been reports of children as young as 10 years old tearing their ACL. Um, and so it definitely happens. And there have been studies that have suggested that uh, that late childhood stage is really a critical time to intervene and try to refine their movements so that they don't then go forward and, and sustain an ACL injury.